Hello, my name is Shivatisa Maloleke and I've just completed my honors degree in environmental and resource studies at the University of Limpopo. I'm going to give a co-talk on paleoclimate and hopefully you'll understand and enjoy the talk. In the hierarchy of models, we are at number four, which is made up of climate changes, ice ages, evolution, and drifting continents. In the beginning, we learned about the Big Bang Theory, which explained to us how everything in the Milky Lane galaxy came into existence. We've also learned about the position of the Earth and how it makes the Earth's temperatures to be not too hot, not too cold, but just right for life to exist on it. We've also learned about circulating climate as well as circulating oceans. And most recently, we've learned about modeling. We learned that a model is a representative of a certain phenomena and that there are different types of models. Most importantly, we learned that all models are wrong, but some models are useful. Now, since there are different types of models, this means that there are climate models, right? Right. Well, I came across this past climate model and I was only able to analyze it to some extent. I was able to see that on the y-axis, its temperature represented in degrees Celsius, whereby at the bottom is 0 degrees Celsius, suggesting that it is cold and as you go up, the temperature increases and it gets warmer. On the x-axis, its time represented in millions of years, whereby on the far left, it's 60 million years ago and on the far right, it's 0. It's zero representing the current time well there are two parts on the graph the first part, part that is from 3 million years ago to 60 million years we can see that the earth's temperature is warm and the fluctuation is occurring at a gradual pace that is at a slow pace while on the second part that is from 3 million years ago to the present time the earth's temperature has dropped and it is much colder with the fluctuation occurring at a much rapid pace now earlier on i did mention that my name is shiwotiso which means question and yes you've guessed it right after studying this past climate quest, uh, climate model i came up with some questions now the first question is how did the scientists know what the past climate was like in the past i mean 60 million years ago we know that by then the humans had not yet evolved and as we know that all uh, at the current time the time traveling machines have not yet been created for us to travel back in time and investigate the past climate conditions well the second question is that how exactly did they find the exact dates on those climatic conditions thirdly why is the second part that i mentioned this part over here why is the earth's temperature much lower and why is the uh, uh, fluctuation occurring at a much rapid pace fourthly and lastly why is the difference between the two parts that i mentioned this part over here and this part over here what caused the difference between the two well in order to answer that going to look at climate proxies, dating methods, the Milankovitch cycle, and of course, why South Africa is a special place in terms of paleoclimate. Well, paleoclimate is the climatic conditions in a geologic past reconstructed from direct and indirect data source. We often confuse climate and weather. Well, in simple terms, weather is what you're going to wear today, and climate is what you're going to pack for a, a vacation confused well it's simple weather is the atmospheric conditions over a short period of time that is from a day to a week or maybe a month while climate is the atmospheric conditions over a long period of, t of time that is from 30 years to a million years while the geologic past it simply means a millions of years ago one would study one would ask rather why what the significance of studying paleoclimate is. Well, we study paleoclimate because the Earth is constantly changing to develop models and to predict the future. A wise man by the name of James Hudson once said 
the present as the key to the past. What that means is that we need what we have today in order to predict, in order rather to find out what the past was like so that we may be able to predict what the future will be like. Well, can we really know what the past climate was like? I mean, think about it. We only have about 167 years of instrumental datum, which is direct. So what was the climate like thousands or maybe a million years ago? Well, in order to find that out, we use climate proxies. Climate proxies are any feature or set of data that has a predictable relationship to climatic factors and can be used to directly measure those factors. We have different types of climate proxies. We have tree rings, ice cores, coral reefs, fossil pollen, deep sea sediments, and plenty more. In this talk though, we are only going to discuss the first three that are highlighted in red. Tree rings. Well, the study of tree rings is known as dental chronology. And in this study, a tree is cut horizontally in order to expose the tree rings. Now, the size of the tree rings is studied whereby the thicker rings, which is this one over here, would suggest that it was a rainy season, which is the optimal conditions or climatic conditions for the tree to grow while the thinner ones which are darker here would suggest that it was a dry season and the conditions were not so favorable the dark patch over here would suggest that there was a forest fire during that period what is important for us to know is that the tree rings are directly affected by the seasons. The second thing you see would be the ice cores. Now the ice cores are extracted through vertically drilling a hole through the ice whereby the seasonal differences in the snow properties create the layers just like in the tree rings. The thickness is used to derive precipitation rate while the milk layers are related to the summer temperatures. In this picture over here, we can see that the darker layers which are thin are the, milk, are the milk layers, while the, the thicker layers are the ones used to derive the precipitation rate. The past temperatures are related directly to the concentration of carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases uh, present in the ice. Now, the dating of the ice cores includes geochemistry, layers of ash, and using numerical flow models to understand the age depth relationships. The third proxy is the coral reefs. Now, the coral reefs are made up of the remains of the marine life. Now, these coral reefs are made through the secretion of calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate mainly comes from the seashells and as we all know that in the ocean there's oxygen isotopes, I mean there's oxygen in the water. Now this results in the, the oxygen isotopes being needed to make the coral reefs. Now the type of oxygen found in the coral reef will then determine the temperature condition in the areas at the formation of that coral reef. Dating methods. Well, in this court talk, we're not going to discuss the romantical dating methods that will help determine um, or rather help us find the potential husband or wife. But instead, we are going to discuss the paleontology dating methods. Now, there are two types of dating methods, which is relative dating uh, and also absolute dating. Relative dating is the science of determining the relative order of past events, that is the age of an object in comparison to another, without necessarily determining their absolute age or the exact age. While absolute dating is the process of determining an age on a specified chronology in archaeology and geology. Absolute implies unwarranted, unwarranted certainty or accuracy. Now, in relative dating, that one would mean that we are basically estimating the age of that thing. Now, in absolute dating, we have radiomet radiometric dating. 
Now, radiometric dating is a method of dating geological specimen by determining the relationship proportions of particular radioactive isotopes present in a sample. Now, there are two types of, or rather two examples of radioactive metric dating which is radiocarbon dating and potassium argon dating in this call talk we are going to discuss the radiocarbon dating now radiocarbon dating as we know that it is a form of radiometric dating it is done through measuring the decay of a certain atom found in a once living organ organism to determine when it was last alive now how this works is that the cosmic rays from the sun would knock some neuron neutrons and protons of some atoms and the combination of those two would form the nitrogen 14 atoms which is then which then forms the carbon 14 atom now the carbon 14 atoms is then consumed by the plant whereby in one case the the carbon 14 atom is consumed by the plant which is the tree over here and then the tree will then die and the carbon 14 atom is then conserved in the dead body of the tree in another part the carbon 14 atom is absorbed by the plant which is the grass and the grass is then absorbed by an animal and then the animal dies and the carbon 14 atom is then conserved in the dead remains of that animal now the carbon 14 atom uh, decays at a predictable rate and has what we call a half life now this half-life would say that the amount of this is rather the amount of time it takes for the carbon 14 atoms to become half now about um this half-life takes about 5730 years and this would means would mean that at about 11,460 years, the carbon atom would then be a quarter, and that is how they are able to date these uh, um, dead organisms. Well, so far we've been able to answer the questions on how the scientists were able to to know what the past climate was like and also how they found out those dates now what we are yet to know and find out is why the earth's temperature is uh, much colder here and the fluctuation is occurring at a much rapid pace well in order to answer that we are going to look at the milankovitch cycle well some milankovitch which is uh, uh, a scientist he suggested that well, climate change has been occurring without anthropogenic influence in the past the first cycle is eccentricity whereby it takes about a hundred thousand years to occur now the shape of the earth's orbit gradually changes from a circular to an elliptic shape now it will change from this circular over here to a more elliptical shape now in the obliquity and the cycle obliquity now this one explains the tilt of the earth it takes about 41,000 years and the earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees from the plan of its orbit from the sun and the high altitude will then as it's tilted like that the high altitude would receive less solar energy while the low um, altitude would receive a higher solar energy now this explains the seasons that we have and since the earth's position is not perpendicular 
to the plane of its orbit because of the tilt the amount of sunlight in a region uh, the amount of sunlight a region receives varies throughout the year now the third cycle is precision whereby it takes 25,000 years now the x-axis wobbles like a top over the course of about 25,000 years now it determines the timing of the seasons relative to the position of the earth along the orbit and around the earth what we need to know is that all these cycles okay at um, um, at the same time and as a result they would result in um the 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 ice ages that we were able to see on the graph well why is south africa special in terms of paleoclimate one would ask well in the we have what is known as the west coast fossil park whereby there was a mining that took place and as there was a mining that took place um the miners came across what is known as a fossil now this fossil has dated to about five million years ago so yes people can come to south africa and study paleoclimate at the west coast fossil park and secondly we have the stromatolites in the port elizabeth they were first discovered in the early 2000s 2000 and the stomacal uh, the stromatolites discovered are extraordinary as they date back to the fossil record of at least 2.7 to 3.5 million years ago now they are unique in their nature because they occur at the interface between fresh water and marine penetration now believe it or not this may also suggest that life originated or started right here in South Africa. Well, we are able to answer the questions on why, how the scientists were able to date, um, to find the dates on the past climate and how the climate was like in the past, as well as why this part over here why the earth's temperature has dropped and is or rather why the earth's temperature here is much lower and the rate is occurring at a much rapid pace what we are yet to know or answer is why there's a difference between the two well that question will be answered on the next talk which is plate tectonics in summary we know that we know what part what paleoclimate is and we know that it is possible to reconstruct paleoclimate using uh, climate proxies we know that we can date proxies through dating methods and that paleoclimate helps us understand the past present and the future climates we also know that climate change has been occurring naturally without the anthropogenic influence as explained by the Milankovitch cycles. And yes, after this talk, one of us can tell Donald Trump that yes, climate change is real. Thank you.